Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I'm doing part one, which is the assembly of the base frame itself. Now, I'm going to be doing a series of videos taking this from part one all the way through the, to the very end to include the setup and running of the new CNC for Newbies new carve. Now, if you are first time here, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you won't miss out on any of the videos. Now, I also will be putting this entire series into a playlist so that you will have a complete set of instructions to be able to assemble your new carve. So let's go ahead and get started today. Well, it's time to start to assemble the new carve. Now, one of the things that I've done right now is just laid out the frame approximately where it needs to be. Now, they provide the instructions, and it's in the format of mechanical drawings. So you can see this is the actual frame where all the nuts and bolts go and shows the exact layout. The next paper that they provide is for the wasteboard itself. They tell exactly where the holes need to be drilled, how large they need to be, and exactly the position of them. And then this is just an overall view that shows the assembled wasteboard onto the frame. This one's really not that important, but the other two are certainly very important to be able to follow. Along with that, I have two bags of parts. The first bag, is for the wasteboard fasteners and the second bag is all of the corners to be able to assemble this frame. The first thing that I like to do is to take all of the corner brackets and the parts that I'm going to be working with and actually position it where they need to be so that you can see all of the corner brackets are all positioned where they need to be with the corresponding nuts and the screws to be able to go into it. So now I know that all the parts are here, I can go ahead and move on to the next step and actually put them on to the frame itself. The tool that I'm using for this is a three millimeter uh, Allen wrench. Now typically I use the T-handle, but that just did not work well. So I just switched over to the regular Allen wrench. And again, this is three millimeters. Now these little nuts are actually very easy to work with with these screws because you can just slip them right in place and then there's two sides. The side with the little teeth on here, that's actually the side that you get to screw on to it. And I can loosely screw this into position and I'm going to do that for all three of these all the way down because I have this one in place and I have the last one down here in place as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach this rail to this and this will stand up just like that and go in position. The nice thing about this, this can just slide right in like that and then you can screw it tight. Now I'm just loosely tightening this right now because everything here is going to have to be adjusted. I'm going to move over and do the same thing with this one. Then I'll slide that, and I'll slide that right into position. There we go. Okay. 
There we go. That one's temporarily in position. And then I'm going to go down here to the last one. Just going to slip the screw through here. Make sure the nut is oriented correctly. Now, if I had to do this again, with my big fingers, I would actually put all of these screws and nuts onto the corner bracket first, and then slide them in place. It would actually be a lot easier to do that way. There we go. Then I'm going to slip this on. Slide that rail right into position. And just snug it up. There we go. Now again, this is just loosely done because that's going to have to move over. In fact, we can go ahead and move that a little bit right now and get it at least closer. Now these are all temporarily in position. I'll do the same thing now on the other side. Now one of the things that I find that helps when you're putting these together is you can go ahead and assemble this screw to begin with, put it on where there's a couple of turns, and then slip it into the track. And then as you turn this, and then just lift up on it and put a little bit of pressure. And that makes it where it's real easy to be able to just tighten up exactly where it needs to be. And that actually needs to be facing that direction. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and set this screw and do the same thing. Get it in position and put on the little nut. I'm gonna tighten that where it doesn't move around. There we go. And I'll be ready to assemble that next. Now with all three corner brackets in position, I'll just rotate this over and then we'll slide it into the position with the little nuts aligned and that will slide right in. And I'll be able to tighten that up. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of back pressure on it. And there we go. That works out real well. There we go. And then we'll just line that up, slide it in. We'll get that where it's right on there. And then as I tighten it, I'm gonna put the back pressure in. There we go. That's just how easy it is. Now we'll adjust this in a moment. Now to get this last one on, we're just going to slip that in there, rotate a little, and then give back pressure. And that's how easy it is to assemble it. Now, everything is just semi-tight, but nothing is square yet. Now the next thing that I've done is just went ahead and opened up the package for the wasteboard fasteners. And if you look at the instructions, it calls for three of these to be in each of these bars. The important thing is one has to be in this member and then one has to be in the center here. So we're going to go ahead and put those in place now and just loosely tighten them down as well. Now this step's not really important, but I want to make sure that I don't lose any parts. 
So that will hold it in position for right now. I'll put that one right in there. This one was screwed on backwards. I gotta be aware of that. That screws in. And there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all of these. Now this is another reason that I like to do this. Because this step wasn't really necessary. But what it did is showed that I have one extra screw that I need, but I do not have a little nut. And no nuts have hit the ground. So I'm missing one of the nuts. Now the good thing is I found that I had an extra couple of these little nuts. A little bit different design, but that's okay. That will work just fine. I went ahead and put that in position. So now I know I have all of the parts that I need to be able to put the waste board on. The first step in getting this frame square is making sure that this from this outer edge to this pencil mark is 30 millimeters. And that is according to the plans. And I need to do that on all four corners. If you refer back to the plans, it shows right here on this detail A that it has to be 30 millimeters from that outside edge of that rail. Now I have the two outer rails in line, but I need to be able to put the center rail in. So I take a tape measure and I measured the length of that bar and it's 1000 millimeters. So half of that is going to be the 500 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and line that up and I'll mark that with a pencil right at the 500 millimeter point. Now that I have the center bar exactly where it needs to be, I want to be able to show you that this is exactly on the 30 millimeter point. Now it's very, very important to get this as accurate as you possibly can because that helps make sure that everything is square. Now the pencil marks that I made on here, I made with a very sharp pencil. No dull points here. Again, accuracy is critical and I wanted to make sure that these marks were dead on and that the frame was put together as accurately as I possibly could. Because the next step we're going to have to do is actually make sure that it's actually square. To be able to check for squareness of this base frame, it's imperative that you realize that a framing square is not necessary. You want to be able to use a tape measure and measure from corner to corner. And you want that measurement to be exactly the same. Now when I measure corner to corner in both directions, my measurement are within less than a half of a millimeter difference between the two measurements. That is good. I, that to me is acceptable and I am not going to try to make an adjustment for something that's less than a half a millimeter. So this completes the base frame. Everything that is done now is tight, secure, and it is square. The next step is cutting out the waste board and installing that. Thank you for watching my video today and I hope that this video was able to help you understand exactly how to assemble the base frame. Now, please remember I am doing a whole series of videos on being able to assemble the entire new car by CNC for newbies. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell so that you'll be notified on all of the videos that I do. Also remember, I'm putting this whole series into a playlist on my channel so that you can be able to refer back to this as you assemble your new carve.